Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm a singer who sews and I'm back on my shenanigans. So one of the things that I did while I was taking an impromptu, very long, months long break was explore some gender expression things. And one thing I discovered about myself is that I haven't worn pants since 2018, but I kind of want to branch back out into pants. So I went to the thrift store looking for pants and I didn't find any pants that I liked, but I did find this amazing tablecloth. It is golden yellow cotton linen twill in like a bottom weight, but it's really, really drapey. And I think it's gonna make some really perfect giant puffy Viking pants a la Welsh Viking. I've done a little tiny bit of research on this and it's mainly just watching Jimmy's video and kind of searching around for patterns and stuff, but I'm going to turn this beautiful twill into those pants. I have a piece approximately two yards wide by two and three quarters yards long. I think that is the exact perfect amount of fabric to make these pants for someone my size. I think I'm just gonna dive right in. The pattern for these pants is very simple and only requires a few measurements. The waist, I put mine at my belly button, got 40 inches. The length, measured my waist to my mid calf and got seven eighths of a yard. The crotch, which I measured at 28 inches. And the cuff, the widest part of the calf, at 16 inches. To wrap my mind around the pants and the measurements, because it wasn't making a ton of sense to me yet, I made this schematic. So we've got a waistband right here, which will be 44 to overlap for a placket. And I have two inches here, which will be doubled over. I've got a placket here of seven inches long. The under gusset, the back gusset, pant legs, which do have the crotch piece here, and then cuffs. And here's what it looks like all plotted out for cutting. With the planning done, I removed the tag from my tablecloth and set to pulling threads using the measurements from my cutting diagram. I ended up needing to pull the threads from the right side of the fabric for the straight grain and from the wrong side for the cross grain due to the twill weave obscuring some of the threads. The pant legs were cut one yard long for extra floof. I cut a two-piece waistband for more stability the only difference from my cutting diagram was that I ended up being able to get the waistband, cuffs, placket, and crotch gusset out of a strip six inches by the length of the tablecloth with a little bit left over, which I used later. I wanted to sew these pants using my vintage new home since I had recently fixed it. The only problem with the machine is that the bobbin winder is missing a part, so I had to use my portable machine for that. I sewed all the major seams with the machine, but decided to do any visible stitching by hand, for fun. For me, the logical first step for the construction was the fly placket. I hemmed one long edge of each placket piece using a whip stitch. I got this hand quilting thread for hand sewing, and it's so much better than trying to sew with polyester. Silk thread would be really nice but this is pretty affordable at like 250 per spool it's poly cotton after i was done i sandwiched the crotch gusset between the two placket pieces like so and stitched it down after pressing the placket pieces into their final position i top stitched them together with a space back stitch to hide the raw edges The other end of the crotch gusset is centered onto the wide, straight edge of the butt trapezoid. When I tried it on pinned to the waistband though, I found that the crotch was way too long because I hadn't accounted for the width of the waistband in my measurement. I ended up shortening the placket by two inches and the crotch gusset by one inch. I also made the top of the trapezoid narrower to better suit my frame. That piece ended up about four inches wide. I had to take some final measurements in order to make my pant legs the correct shape. Here's the math I ended up with. The crotch curve is the length of the placket plus the length of the crotch gusset. The straight portion of the leg, or what I'm calling the leg gusset, is the width of the edge of the butt gore to the edge of the crotch gore. 
And that leg curve is the length of the leg minus the length of the angled side of the butt trapezoid. Hope that made sense. <laughs> I found the center point of the leg gusset by marking the halfway point between the length of the crotch curve and the length of the trapezoid. I centered the leg gusset on that point and then used my measuring tape to estimate the crotch curve and the leg curve, marking with chalk before I cut. Next, it was time to put the main body of the pants together. I started by attaching the straight edge of the pant legs to the long edges of the butt gore. Then, I attached the crotch curve of each leg to the placket and crotch gusset. The gusset part of the pant legs were attached to the short edge of the butt gore at right angles to the crotch gusset. All sewn together, the crotch portion of the pants looks like this. Finally, I stitched the inseam of the pants. Look at these pants. They're so dumb. I couldn't help myself because they looked so ridiculous and I tried them on. <laughs> They're so big. <laughs> When I was satisfied, I set to felling down all the seam allowances. I did the butt first, then the crotch, the placket and crotch curve, and finally the leg seams. Most of the seams were whip stitched away from the seam like you see here, but because of the orientation of the placket, the crotch seams were trimmed and fell to one side. To make the waistband, I started by cutting a strip of fusible interfacing and ironing it to the wrong side of one of my waist pieces. I opted for this modern stabilizer for ease, durability, and the promise of crisp lines, as I'm hoping to use these pants a lot for history bounding, and I want them to hold up. I cut some little rectangles from the excess fabric to make into belt loops. These pieces were about uh, an inch and a half by the width of the waistband piece. To make really nice looking loops, I folded the long edges to the center, folded again, and pressed before whip stitching the edges. I wanted them to be nice and clean, so I then pressed them flat with the whipped seam centered. I centered one of the belt loops on the waistband and then stitch the short edge of the butt gore to the waistband on top of that. The edges of the placket were sewed to the ends of the waistband, leaving some seam allowance, of course. I then placed the rest of the belt loops and stitched them down before preparing my fabric for pleating. I used to pleat using meticulous methods involving math and things, but that gets really tedious, especially when I have to pleat this much fabric down to my waistband. I've heard other costumers calling the following method the divide and conquer method. I divided my waistband and my pant legs into even sections by folding them in half multiple times. Then I matched the pins on the pants and the waistband like this. And once everything was attached, I pleated by eye, making more or less even pleats. I wanted a lot of small pleats, but you could just as easily make fewer, bigger pleats. Stitching all this down was really slow. There were lots of pins. After pressing my waistband with its pleats, I pinned the other waist piece to the waistband right sides together on top of the belt loops. I stitched along three sides of the rectangle, then clipped the corners and pressed the seam toward the interface waist piece before turning it right side out, pressing again, 
and felling the lining down by hand. The cuffs were the last thing that needed to be attached, so I sewed the short ends right sides together, then folded the tube, like so. I pleated the pant legs to the cuff in the same way as the waistband, except that this was a bit trickier because there was more fabric to fit into a smaller space. After this step, I was rushing to finish these pants so I could wear them to an event, so I stopped filming, but the cuffs were felled down much like the waistband. I then finished the pants by making a spaced back stitch along the edges of the waistband and cuffs to keep everything flat. And I added two hooks and bars as closures. I have been loving these pants. I can style them long since I added an extra few inches to the pant legs and they look super cute like this. Or I can tie them up like so. Paired with this sweater that I made, it gives me an impression of a Victorian cycling costume without being so extra, aside from the color, you know. And here's a more historical Viking outfit with a tunic I borrowed from my emotional support Viking. I've used garters to tie the pants up since I don't have Winnegas yet. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back someday, hopefully sooner rather than later, with more sewing content. And in the meantime, if you're wanting to look at some of the stuff I was doing recently, you can check out my other YouTube channel at ngracesoprano and see my videos that I recorded to submit to doctoral applications. Happy sewing and a happy new year.